Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I wanted to give my reaction to this recent Russell Brand video. It was an interview he had with Adam Andruski, and I'm probably butchering his name, and I apologize for that. But uh, Adam was pretty much giving an inside uh, look into our government and the internal corruption. Now, this isn't leaning left or right. It's actually about both parties. Um, so you guys can make your own judgment and uh, determination of, you know, who's the lesser of two evils. But I think it pretty much shows that there's corruption on, corruption on both sides, that there's corruption on both sides. And uh, we need to start keeping a closer eye on our government and start learning and figuring out ways to protect ourselves from our government. What I want to ask you about primarily is, uh, the, given the nature of the uh, charges that Trump faces, it's worth investigating whether they are particularly unique or particularly pronounced or specifically and obviously worse than the types of crimes that ordinarily take place within political campaigns and campaigning. Can you give us any sort of references or uh, that, that perhaps contextualize Trump's charges? Well, it's a sad day for the American people on a lot of levels, Mr. Brand, but specifically. Now, I just want to pause it right there because it's funny how he says it's a sad day for the American people. Because if you guys haven't been following, Trump has been, uh, what, 34 counts, I believe, uh, of charges. And it's stemming from a payoff that he made to a, an escort, former porn star Stormy Daniels. And again, it, it's one of those cases that just seems like the left is just out to get Trump and they're doing everything they can to pretty much prevent him from running in the election or even winning the next presidential election. So it, it is a sad day. And let's hear what Adam has Specifically, to say. You know, I'm from Illinois. It is the Super Bowl of corruption and our governors are legendary for their corrupt practices. And, uh, just so you guys know, Barack Obama was a representative from Illinois. So, you know, yeah. At a recent point, four out of our last nine governors served time in the federal penitentiary. And so, you know, we've got a unique perspective on this. Um, it is a new era of brass knuckle politics across the entire country. So, for example, if you're Hillary Clinton, if you have the Clinton Foundation and it's based in Little Rock, Arkansas, Pulaski County, there's a prosecutor there. And you better be able to justify your quarter billion dollar endowment or the 75% drop in your fundraising between the time you left Secretary of State's office and 2020. If you're Nancy Pelosi, and if you are, you know, if there's a new Republican president, you'll probably get a knock from the Securities and Exchange Commission, and they're going to ask you to justify your stock market trades. If you're President Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, the entire family on a new Republican president, I mean, this opens up a whole Pandora's box. It is a troubling moment in the history of the country when a local prosecutor uh, goes after a former U.S. president and leading contender in a major party and decides to arrest and arraign him. And I'm going to just pause it there. And yeah, I. so what I've been saying for a while now is Crazy has been fighting crazy, and both parties have been trying to one up each other in terms of the crazy uh, scale. So, yes, a local prosecutor decided to bring up charges on Trump when this is unprecedented, right? Because, look, we all know all these political figures are doing or at least toting the line of legal and illegal, right? Like, like let's not be ignorant to the fact. But the system has always been set up to where they don't get prosecuted. Like no one truly goes after them or calls them out for what they're doing. You might have some, you know, whistleblowers here and there, but no one actually says I'm going to go out and charge them. So this is the, a new phenomenon, right? So the left is going after Donald Trump and pretty much what Adam is saying is if the right wins the next presidential election, they're probably going to start going after members on the left, right? And discrediting them and making sure that their strong candidates or their strong leaders are brought up on charges and, and you know, discredited and things of that nature. So now we have a, a, a tug of war going on between our political parties. And the only people that's going to suffer is the American people. Now, the only solution I see is 
you might have to scrap the whole political system, right? And create a new one. Just remove all these people from office and get new blood in there. But that's probably not going to happen, right? That, like that's they're they're not going to change the status quo. They're just going to continue to try to one up each other, and we're just going to be caught in the crossfires, right? Because issues that truly matter, mental health, the economy, uh, war, uh, education, you know, these uh, real issues are going to start to get pushed to the back seat because we're going to be only, you're only going to have media coverage of this congressman is now, you know, being indicted or that congressman or this, you know, government officials being indicted. And that's what's going to dominate the headlines, right? Because those those negative stories dominate the headlines, not what the people truly need. It's always the nonsense, right? And that's the road we're heading down, and it's unfortunate. I suppose so. So what you're saying is, is you have to have a legitimate and transparent authority to conduct an investigation like this. And it's clear, even from the examples that you have cited, that there is no moral authority, that how would Nancy Pelosi and Paul Pelosi stand up to rigorous investigation? How would the uh, Hillary and Bill Clinton Foundation look under scrutiny in their relationship with some of their donors? And, and, and more broadly, there is so much systemic corruption. The relationship between politics and, and finance and the military industrial complex, lobbying itself, the number of people in Congress that own stocks and shares in companies that they regulate. It's so murky and so messy. And in fact, obviously, that's to some degree what led to the rise of Donald Trump. His anti-establishment rhetoric being what most people who... And, and I'm going to just pause right there because, yes, that is why people um, voted for Trump, right? It, he told the truth. He said, yes, I'm corrupt. Because that's the system. I play the game, guys. I've done, uh, I've broken the law to what I'm allowed, to the degree that I'm allowed to break it. When you guys learn the system, get to a certain level, you can, you can do these same things. So this has been happening on both sides forever, right? And again, we turn a blind eye to these, uh, to these uh, individuals' uh, antics because we always hope that their true agenda is the betterment of the American people. But we know that's not true, right? Their, their true agenda is, to better, is the betterment of themselves, their families, their friends, and you know, their, their business and corporate ties and, and networks. But this is the first time that one side has truly called out the other side by actually following um, legal proceedings, right? So it's like, how far is this going to go? Because both sides is dirty, right? So it's like, you got to prosecute the entire government. Well, then we wouldn't have a functioning country if you truly did the right thing because nobody's morally right. And that's the unfortunate part of our country, right? When you think about it, no one is morally right. Both sides are corrupt. So like I said, the only thing you could truly do is either completely tear down our entire political system and create a new one get all new government officials or pretend like we've been doing that nothing's going on, right? That they're, that they're all moral and, and, and they, they truly care about us. And we just continue that, that cycle of, yeah, you know, this guy is great. And we know, and this woman is great, but we know they're not right. We know they're just, they're in a political position because someone, bought it and they're just in there to repay their debt to the people that paid to get them in right love him find appealing about him that if you are going to start to address these types of issues legitimately not as part of a political witch hunt to get rid of a, a sort of a potential or, or an obvious potential opponent then you're then it's you're going to have to dismantle the machine itself and that's what I just said, right, guys? You got to break. You got to break the entire machine, which they're not going to do. So again, this is going to become a back and forth tug of war of who can indict who, and who can embarrass you the most, right? Who can I? Who can be? Who's going to get discredited the most, where they can't win future elections? 
Well, jailing your political opponents is no solution. And look, Trump had Trump never had a chance here. Take a look at the case from 2011. A twice running former presidential candidate, a former U.S. senator from North Carolina, a Democrat, John Edwards. Well, the Justice Department came in and indicted him on six counts for allegedly taking a million dollars worth of campaign cash, actual campaign cash, to cover up his affair with a mistress. Okay, he beat those charges. Five were eventually dismissed. The one that went to the jury that rendered a decision, he was not guilty. In this case, Trump is being prosecuted for not paying 130000 for Stormy Daniels and disclosing it as a campaign expense, the exact opposite of John Edwards. So you can't have it both ways. This is a flimsy case, and quite frankly, it's a sad moment for the American experiment. So pretty much uh, someone on the left, John, Senator, former Senator John Edwards, did the same thing, except he used campaign money, right, fundraiser, fundraising money to pay off his mistress. And Trump just used his own money, right? Like most of us would do when we pay for private services or escorts, if you're into that sort of thing. The hypocrisy is just off the charts. And, you know, as Americans, y'all, we really got to be looking over our shoulder and figuring out what's the future and where are we headed as a society? <laughs> you can't call America an experiment at this stage, Adam. It's, there's clearly some results are already in. Now, I wanted to ask you a little more about uh, earmarks, which are you, I, I believe you're going to demonstrate to us is a great example of bipartisan corruption. At the moment, I don't even know what earmarks are. Will you please, as you have done ever since the moment I first clapped my hungry eyes upon you, Educate us, Adam. Well, earmarks are the currency of corruption in Congress, Mr. Brand. So earmarks, they were dead for 10 years. There was a ban on them because they were so abused in the past. Uh, earmarks is quite simply a legal bribe doled out to maximize the power of the House Speaker. They dole out earmarks on these big spending bills, the omnibus, minibus spending bills, to make them bipartisan on the votes. So you give away a member pet project in their district, and then you grease the skids for the votes. So in the last omnibus spending bill in December of this year, it was a $1.7 trillion. So hold on, I'm just going to pause it. And yes, $1.7 trillion spending, right? So pretty much what he's saying, these earmarks are, from how I take it is, you trying to get a bill through, but obviously you need votes from both sides. So I go to you, you're a representative from this district, and I say, hey, look, I'll give you such and such. I'll approve such and such project, something of your interest, your personal and private interest. I'll invest in it. I'll give you the money for it. I'll allow it if you vote on my bill. When that's happening, you got to take a step back now and really say, these political parties mean absolutely nothing, right, to a lot of these elected officials. They're in it to fatten their pockets. They don't, they don't have an allegiance to the left or the right. Their allegiance is to the almighty dollar. So as citizens, we need to pay attention to this and stop bickering over our social and political ties, right? Because our officials don't even care about it, right? They're not representing us in our best interest. They're representing themselves. So we have to stop fighting and we have to start working together as citizens and as people because that's the only way we're going to get out of this, guys. I mean, listen to this. That means people are breaking their values and their morals, their political values and morals so that they could get a project or they could get funding for something in their own private interest. That means they have that means they don't care if it's if if the Democrats want to do something that's completely against a conservative and Republican ideology. A Republican will still go along with it so that they can get uh, what uh, a business or, or, or something set up in their district. That means they don't truly believe in conservative values, Right. And, and this is goes either way. Right. And yet we're on Twitter and all the social media platforms arguing political ideologies about people who don't give a damn about us. Our bill 
There was 7,500 earmarks in that bill, costing the American taxpayer $16 billion. And some of the examples are just absolutely outrageous. So you've got you've got a million dollars on a macadamia nut research uh, store uh, grant, uh, earmark in Hawaii by the U.S. senator. You've got a million dollars doled out to the Great Blacks in Wax Museum by Kwame and Fume, a congressman from Baltimore who actually has a wax statue in the museum. So um, he probably got himself a gold chain, right? No, I'm not, I don't want to be a stereotype. So, so what do you do? Uh, give himself a bigger exhibit? Like, are you guys serious? Macadamia nuts? Like, like what's going on here, guys? You've got a you've got million dollars uh, doled out for a new stairway, not to heaven, but to the beach in Mundo Beach, California, so the surfers can hit the waves faster. You've got a million dollars doled out for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. You got $3 million doled out for the Hip Hop Museum in New York. You've got $3.5 million doled out by the Republican U.S. Senator Susan Collins in Maine for the Irish Heritage Museum. So guys, this is bipartisan. That's why I want you guys to understand. We're not leaning one way or the other. We're talking about right down the middle, both political parties, legal bribes, taking legal bribes, right? So that bills can be passed, going against the value of their districts, the value of the people that elected them, the value of the, the values of the people that support them. And again, we're fighting each other for these nuts. The examples are endless. Can you tell us a little more? Thank you for that. Can you tell us a little more about the collusion between Big Pharma and the government? In particular, we, we want to talk oh. about the uh, Buys Dole Act. Or I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. Like, the, you know, well, recently when we saw Joe Biden railing against the pharmaceutical industry, we were struck by his failure to use an existing piece of legislation to prevent people paying $190,000 a year for a cancer drug. I understand that you know more about this than us. And Frankly, that's not hard, but would you please share that knowledge? So at $180,000, $190,000 a year for this prostate cancer drug, by the way, which is really effective, uh, activists felt that this would be a great test case example for the National Institutes of Health to finally come in and use what's called their march in powers to be able to knock down the price of that drug. The National uh, Institutes of Health they weighed in and they did not use their power. They did not use their regulatory power to knock it down. I wonder why. So on its face, this looked like a great textbook example. There was a high price. The National Institutes of Health, the US Army, everyone agreed had helped fund the development of that drug. Uh, UCLA had received those federal grants and they had pioneered the technologies to help that drug actually come to market. They had licensed it to the pharmaceutical company, a foreign one from Japan. So you have a foreign pharmaceutical company to boot. And so they felt this was a great, on its face, this would be a great textbook example to see. So wait a second, wait a second. Let's, let's. They find a drug that can help men with prostate cancer, right? Can help treat prostate cancer. They give money to UCLA to pretty much, uh, perfect the drug UCLA then gives the drug or sells it to a pharmaceutical company in Japan. Right? So that's where we're at right there. Right? So I don't want anybody to get lost. That's where we're at right now. Let's see if for the first time in history, NIH would use its power to regulate and knock down the price of that drug in Japan. For example, it's $30,000, not 190,000 a year. Well, uh, the Biden administration decided not to use it. And because it look, I, I think it's because, this ran right up against the Pfizer footprint, against the Pfizer fiefdom. So UCLA, which had licensed the technology of the pharmaceutical company, had collected a half billion dollars between 2012 and 2016 on royalties, but then they sold their future royalty stream out through 2027 for over a billion dollars to Royal Pharmacy, who was then quickly acquired by Pfizer, even though the no. for the drug is held by the Japanese pharmaceutical company. The U.S. market is run by Pfizer. So now, Russell, you have Pfizer, when they make a sale since 2016 in the United States, not only do they reap the profit from their sale of the but pill, they get the royalties. but they also reap on the backside of course. a piece of the royalty.
and no one sees the problem with this, right? And, and so not only are they double dipping on the profits, they're overcharging for the drug. So they double dip, which is bad enough, right? But it's like, okay, maybe we can lower the prices now that we're double dipping. No, 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 no. Raise the price. So that when we, while we're double dipping, we're maximizing our profits at the same time. Like this is greed at its core. Biden, this completely discredits Biden's war on the pharmaceutical company. It's nonsense because if he had this legis legislation that he could have used against him, why didn't he use it? He's just giving out empty rhetoric to his supporters to say, I'm with you guys. And at the same time, we know he's being paid by Pfizer or under the table by Pfizer to not regulate this the payment as well. They're double dipping every sale on that pill. So I don't I don't think the Biden administration wanted to get the way of Pfizer. And that's it right there, right? Of course he didn't because he's going to pay. And so this was a good interview and this is only a portion of the interview. You guys should go check out Russell Brand for the entire interview. Uh, the information's up there on the screen if you can see it. rumble.com's um Russell Brand. Backslash Russell Brand. Um I don't even know where to begin, right? I mean, we have political officials going against their political ideologies and values for money. Okay. You know, people are greedy. We get that. Um, but to the level and extent that they're doing it, right? This And this is bipartisan, guys. Again, this is not the left is worse than the right. No, this is both parties have major fundamental issues and our entire political system is corrupt and i'm sure there are good people out there right i'm sure there are people that truly want to do the best for us right for the citizens but when you hear this level of corruption you, you gotta wonder like who where are they are they being silenced are they just not able to do anything they want to, but they can't. They don't know how. Like, what is really going on here? Um, this is horrible stuff right here. And as an American citizen, I'm frustrated. You guys should be frustrated because, again, this is bipartisan. Both sides are doing this. Both sides are corrupt. Yes, to give a summary, the left is going too far with trying to indict Trump. But... This is that's just a product of the overall corruption that's happening in our political system. And like I said, crazy is trying to out crazy crazy, right? So they're just pushing the envelope. The corruption is growing. The animosity is growing. And we're being caught in the crossfires. And we're fighting and hating one another. And guys, we're just being used. And that's what I want you to take from this. We are being used by these political figures. So they can fatten their pockets, discredit the other guy in the process. We got to be smarter than this, right? So leave your comments below. Tell me what you guys think. Again, this is Russell's brand's interview. Um, go check him out. He's on YouTube. He's also on Rumble. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you want to hear more from me, subscribe, click notifications. This is what we do. We're going to keep trying to do this, right? I'm, I'm trying to give you guys information to help you think help you protect yourselves. And as always, take care of your mind, take care of your body, and take care of each other because that's all we got. Peace.